Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, in this session, uh, we, we will see how the osmotic pressure modeling will for membrane filtration can be done in order to get a appropriate system performance. In the, in, the, in the last class, what we have seen is that uh, we have looked into the transport uh, phenomena based modeling for the um, uh, reverse osmosis for flow through the porous medium and we have found out the how the solute flux, what will be the expression of solute flux and solvent flux through the porous media that is the membrane. Now, as we have discussed in the last class that that is not the end of the story, one has to hook up the uh, mass transfer boundary layer that is there in that that will be formed in the flow channel. So, once that will be uh, hooked up with the um, uh, transport phenomena in the porous medium, then in the, com the combined theory will be providing an estimate of system performance in terms of permeate flux and permeate concentration. Now, today we will be looking into the modeling of concentration polarization that there, there is a transport that is occurring uh, external to the membrane surface in the flow channel within the flow channel. So, we will be uh, now there will be uh, uh, will be will be building up the model from from a very simplistic approach to a very complicated one and which will be quite realistic. So, therefore, first we will be um, uh, assuming that there will be a constant a film of uh, solute that will be forming over the uh, mem membrane surface which will be having a constant thickness. So, this constant thickness film is known as the uh, 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 known as film theory and it is one dimensional approach and this film theory will be uh, giving you an estimate and of uh, um, permeate flux and permeate concentration when it is properly hooked up with the Darcy's law and the solute solution diffusion model or de definition of real retention uh, uh, that will be the, the transport that is occurring uh, the uh, within the mass trans uh, within the membrane surface within, within the membrane matrix. So, we will be first looking into a one dimensional model of um, uh, model of mass transfer boundary layer within the flow channel, then we will be looking into the shortcoming of one dimensional model and uh, the film theory which will be identical to the film theory and then we will be looking into how these shortcomings can be overcome and one can do a, a you know a detailed modeling with a two dimensional modeling and how the osmotic pressure control filtration will then really be modeled. So, in the uh, at the at the outset I will be doing the one dimensional modeling of concentration polarization. Now, the assumptions are basically it is a steady state transport process second assumption is the transport coefficients are constant and third assumption is no solute adsorption on membrane surface. So, now uh, let us have a schematic and fix up our coordinate system. Suppose, this is the membrane surface and we are assuming a const a film of solute of constant thickness is formed over the membrane surface and this thickness constant thickness is given as delta and we fix up our fix up our coordinate system y uh, uh, from the bottom of the channel. So, this y is equal to 0 
and this direction is x direction or axial direction. So, let us write down the various solute fluxes, those are the appearing to the membrane surface. Once one will be the convective flux V w c V w c that will be the convective flux towards the membrane surface, because the solvent is flowing towards the membrane because of the applied pressure in the channel. So, because of that some solute will be also dragged along with it. So, total solvent total solute flux towards the membrane by the convection will be V w c. Then there will be a uh, backward diffusion from the membrane surface to the bulk. Why? Because solutes will be deposited over the membrane surface. Therefore, as we have discussed in the last class, the membrane sur solute concentration on the membrane surface will be higher compared to the bulk concentration and therefore, that will cause a backward diffusion from the membrane surface towards the bulk. So, it will be minus d d c d y and the solute will be going away from the membrane surface in order to uh, whenever there will be some solute that will be coming to the permeate. So, it will be V w C p. So, at the steady state summation of all three fluxes will be equal to 0. So, V w C minus of minus d d c d y minus V w C p is equal to 0. So, therefore, V w C is towards the membrane surface, V w C p is away from the membrane surface, therefore, there is a minus sign here, minus d d c d y is the diffusive flux away from the membrane surface. So, therefore, there is a uh, you know uh, uh, minus sign here. So, you will be getting as V w C minus C p plus d d c d y will be equal to 0. So, this one dimensional governing equation is formed uh, to in order to quantify the uh, mass transfer boundary layer within the member within the, uh, the solute concentration, concentration balance solute balance within the mass transfer boundary layer. Now, let us try to solve this equation and see what we get. So, it will give you d d c d y is equal to minus v w c minus c p. So, therefore, uh, d c d by c minus c p is equal to minus V w by d d y, then this has to be integrated over the mass transfer boundary layer thickness 0 to delta and from membrane surface concentration to bulk concentration. So, so you will be getting l n c naught minus c p divided by c m minus c p is equal to minus V w delta by d and if you take the minus sign incorporate. So, the therefore, this will be giving you equal to V w by d by delta and what is d by delta? Delta d by delta is nothing but the film mass transfer coefficient. So, therefore, one will be quantifying the concentration polarization C m minus C p divided by C naught minus C p is equal to exponential V w by k. This is a one dimensional model of to quantify the concentration polarization or mass transfer boundary layer uh, in the in the channel. If it we consider a one dimensional film that is formed over the membrane surface. Now, let us look into the how uh, the mass transfer coefficient will be calculated or estimated, then we will be uh, we will be looking into the how this will be hooked up with the uh, Darcy's law in order to get a system performance and various you know simplified version of this. So, this mass transfer coefficient can be obtained from the non dimensional Sherwood number relationship. K is obtained or estimated from the Sherwood number relationship. Sherwood is defined as k d equivalent by d, where k is the mass transfer coefficient, d equivalent is the equivalent diameter of a channel. Of 
of flow channel and capital D is the solute diffusivity. Therefore, for a rectangular channel, channel of uh, height, half height h and width w, one can estimate the equivalent diameter as 4 into weighted area divided by weighted perimeter. So, let us find out what it comes out to be 4 into weighted area is basically if this is the cross section of the channel weighted area will be basically the 2 h multiplied by w. So, 2 h into w divided by weighted perimeter is uh, 2 times w plus 2 h. Okay. So, this turns out to be this 2 will be cancelling out and generally h is the in the order of millimeter and w will be in the order of centimeter let us say 5 centimeter 6 centimeter like that. So, this will be order of magnitude 3 order of 2 order of magnitude less. So, therefore, w is much much greater than h. So, one will be getting uh, this 2 h will be very very small and w w will be cancelling out. So, one will be getting d equal to roughly 4 into half height. So, that is the equivalent diameter of the or that is the equivalent diameter of the channel and for a tube or pipe d equivalent is equal to internal diameter of tube. So, that is how the equivalent diameter is defined in both the cases for the flow through a channel or flow through a tube. Flow through a channel will be similar to flow through a spiral wound module and flow through a tube will be um, basically uh, um, uh, the flow, flow through a hollow fibers or flow through a tubular module. Okay. So, next we will be looking into the various relations of Sherwood number expression for various flow geometries and flow domains, so that the mass transfer coefficient can be estimated. Now, <coughs> let us look into the two domains, first two flow domains <coughs> laminar flow, where Reynolds number is less than 2200 and for rectangular and we will be considering two geometries rectangular channel channel Reynolds number is equal to rho d equivalent velocity in the flow channel divided by mu where is the definition of Reynolds number and mass transfer coefficient will be estimated from k d e by d is equal to 1.85 Reynold Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3, where Smith is equal to mu by rho d, okay, Smith number. So, for tubular module for flow through a tube, Sherwood number is defined as k d over d is equal to uh, 1.62 Reynold Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3, where in both the cases l is the length of the module. That means, for rectangular channel l is the length of the channel, for the tubular for the tube uh, uh, l is the length of the tube. So, mass transfer coefficient or uh, will be calculated from this Sherwood number and these relations are known as the Levex relation. For turbulent flow, which 
where the Reynolds number is greater than 4000, the Sherwood number relationship is obtained from famous Dieters Bolter relationship. So, this becomes k d equivalent by d is equal to 0 0.023 Reynolds met Reynolds to the power 0.8. Smith to the power 0.33. There is no geometric factor like d by l. So, in case of a rectangular channel, d is the d equivalent. In case of tubular four, d equivalent um, uh, equal to diameter of the tube. So, this becomes 0 0.023 Reynolds to the power 0 0.8 and Smith to the power 0.33. This relationship is famous Dieters Volter relationship. correlation. Now, this correlation is obtained from the heat and mass, heat and mass transfer analogy and uh, it may be noted that for the Liebig equations, these are basically the relations or equations and these relations are obtained theoretical calculations from the fundamental theory from basic principles, first principles. On the other hand, in the case of turbulent flow, dieters volter relationship is obtained uh, from, the, from the correlations. So, it is not a relationship, it is a correlation and it is generally obtained from the analogy between heat and mass transfer. Next, we will be looking into the how uh, the Sherwood number of mass transfer coefficients are estimated for start cell, because in most of the membrane operations, the uh, in laboratory scale operations, they are, um, they are conducted either in start cell. So, in case of start cell, start cell the Sherwood number is defined as S h is equal to k r over d and r is basically k is the mass transfer coefficient as usual, d is the solute diffusivity, r is the cell radius, cell radius. And we, we have two domains of uh, you know uh, Reynolds number, Reynolds number is defined as rho omega r r divided by mu. So, omega is the angular velocity of stirring stirring rpm. So, it will be ultimately converted into radian per second to be converted to radian per second. So, this will be having a unit of velocity. So, rho v r divided by mu r is the radius of the cell. So, this will become rho omega omega r square by mu, where r is the cell radius. Okay. So, now we have defined Sherwood number in two domains for Reynolds number greater than th you know 30,000 and Reynolds number less than 30,000. In case of Reynolds number greater than 30,000, uh, the relationship is S h equal to k r over d is equal to 0 0.0443 Reynolds to the power 0 0.8 Smith to the power 0 0.33. And in case of Reynolds number less than 32000, this will be Sherwood equal to 0 0.285 Reynolds to the power 0 0.55 and Smith to the power 0.33. These two relationship will be op will be used in order to estimate the mass transfer coefficient in case of uh, flow through a start cell. Okay. Next, what we will be looking into? We will be looking into a system of cross flow filtration. What is a cross flow filtration? Cross flow filtration is basically a, a system which will be which is generally used under uh, in an actual industrial scale. Actual industrial scale we have the cross flow filtration. Why, why it is called a cross flow filtration? Because as we have discussed, suppose there is a flow occurring through a channel 
and membrane is placed at the bottom. In fact, in an actual module, there is a in the top surface also you place a membrane so that the surface area of the membrane is to be uh, is to be more in the in, in a in a small channel. So therefore, one can get a very compact design can realize high surface area in a small volume and the design becomes very very compact. So let us just for the time being we assume a um, uh, uh, membrane is placed at the bottom surface and this is the middle of the channel. So, this is half height of the channel. Now, when the flow is occurring, the concentration of the solute will be deposited over the membrane surface and it will form a mass transfer boundary layer as we have discussed earlier. Now, the problem is this mass transfer boundary layer can grow unlimitedly, but if it grows unlimitedly, the it offers more resistance against the solvent flux. So, therefore, at the beginning of the mass transfer boundary layer, the resistance is minimum and one will be getting a very high permeate flux. As the thickness of mass transfer boundary layer increases, it will be offering more resistance gradually and the solvent flux will be decreasing slowly and slowly. So, later on in the downstream of the channel, when the mass transfer boundary layer will be growth of the mass transfer boundary layer will be very, very less. So, one will be getting a constant uh, flux at the in the or in the downstream of the channel. So, therefore, what cross flow, what is cross flow? So, actually the feed is pumped into the channel and the bulk flow is occurring in this direction. So, the, so this, therefore, the feed is entering into the channel, permeate is coming out and the retentate strip is going out. Now, in this case, feed is flowing in this direction, in the horizontal direction, in the x direction and if you, if you if you call this this x direction and this is y. So, uh, feed is flowing in the x direction and the permeate is flowing in the y direction which will be at 90 degree or so that is why this flow is called a cross flow filtration. Why the cross flow term is coming? Because the filtrate or permeate is coming at 90 degree compared to the direction of flow in the feed chamber. So, therefore, the in this cross flow filtration, what is the advantage? The advantage is we are not allowing the mass transfer boundary layer to grow unlimited. The mass transfer boundary layer is limited, uh, the growth of the mass transfer boundary layer is limited or arrested by the forward by the by the convection, forced convection um, uh, caused by the uh, uh, velocity of the feed in the channel. So, the growth of mass transfer boundary layer is controlled or arrested by the uh, uh, feed flow and that is why in the, in the cross flow filtration system will be very, very efficient and will be curbing the growth of the mass transfer boundary layer. Therefore, vis a vis the uh, resistance against the solvent flux, therefore, one can realize very high permeate fl uh, uh, flux or the throughput in a very in a cross flow system. So, cross flow systems, cross flow filtration are quite important and popular and they are widely used in order to get a, in, a, in an actual membrane filtration system. In fact, all the spiral wound module, the uh, tubular module flow, flow through hollow fibers, they are the cross flow systems. Okay. So, now we will be looking into the system prediction of system performance. of cross flow system uh, using the, um, uh, uh, the film theory, one dimensional model film theory and the osmotic pressure model. So, as we have discussed, there are two aspects in the modeling of this. One is the okay, you know, um, uh, uh, so solution of mass transfer boundary layer in order to get the concentration profile. We evaluate this concentration profile at the membrane surface. Why? Because then it will be hooked up with the flow through the porous membrane. Evaluate concentration profile at membrane surface.
once this is done, then we will be uh, and we will be having another transport flow domain. The next domain is transport occurring in the porous membrane. Okay. In the first for the first case for the flow through membrane channel, we have got the concentration profile and 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 obtain the mass trans or uh, obtain the um, uh, concentration profile evaluate the con evaluated the concentration profile in the membrane uh, at the membrane surface so that is obtained by the film theory so film theory is the theory that was applied external to the membrane surface in the flow channel as cm minus cp divided by c not minus cp is equal to exponential vw by k okay Next, we will be um, uh, looking into the transport to the porous membrane. One is first one is the Darcy's law for the solvent flux. Solvent flux, and this is also known as the osmotic pressure model. This this is identical osmotic pressure model. Okay. Now, what is that? V W is equal to L P del p minus del pi. Now, in this equation L p is the membrane per per performance parameter, it is a membrane characteristic. So, we will be as we have discussed earlier, we have already evaluated this permeability from a separate set of experiments. Delta p is the transmembrane pressure drop. Let us look what is delta pi is. Delta pi is pi osmotic pressure at the membrane surface minus osmotic pressure at the in the permeate side. Okay. So, what is osmotic pressure? Osmotic pressure can be expressed as a function of concentration like this A, A 1 C plus A 2 C square plus A 3 C cube. Okay. So, what is pi m? Pi m will be nothing but A 1 C m plus A 2 C m square plus A 3 C m cube and what is pi p? Pi p will be in the permeate side a 1 c p plus a 2 c p square plus a 3 c p q. Okay. Once we quantify this, we can really quantify what is delta pi. Delta pi will be difference of these two. So, this becomes a 1 c m minus c p plus a 2 c m square minus c p square plus a 3 C m cube minus C p cube. Okay. So, now this if you if you if you look so this equation the second equation the Darcy's law or the osmotic pressure model we have uh, constant value of L p we have the operating pressure delta pi and uh, delta p and delta pi osmotic pressure difference will be expressed in terms of C m and C p. So, you have two governing equation one equation for uh, so solute flux in the mass transfer boundary layer another equation is the solvent flux for the for the flow through the membrane so uh, if, uh, we have how many unknowns let's see we have three unknowns vw cm and cp and we have two governing equations so two equations and three unknown and these three unknowns are cm cp and v w. So, I stop you in this class. In the next class, we will see how, how we invoke one more uh, equation uh, in order to solve these three unknown and uh, three equation system. Thank you very much.